And uh, let me end with this, so that, let end this discussion of Feynman diagrams with this, so that I don't leave you with a mistaken impression. Um, I told you that this is the primitive vertex, right? So you might, so you know, one might think, oh, then I can find a process that corresponds to this exact Feynman diagram, uh, where I have an electron coming in, it emits a photon, and it um, and it goes out. So, you know, that's a possible Feynman diagram. So I want to find this um, physical process, and I will tell you the answer. Um, there is no physical process, no known physical process that corresponds to this diagram. Can someone kind of see why? Well, electron interacting with the photon, that's possible. Kind of comes back to this idea. Each vertex enforces all required conservation laws. Which of the conservation laws would you have trouble with, with at this vertex? Charge is conserved. One negative charge comes in, one negative charge goes out. So charge is good. So let me give you a principle that's going to be useful in analyzing whether an interaction is possible. So this is a principle, principle of relativity, that when you change reference frames, that you don't change laws of physics. So if a physical process is impossible in one reference frame, it's impossible in any other reference frame. Good? You guys all take that as a true statement? OK, then consider this. I would like to analyze this electron in its own rest frame. So I said electron coming in. Well, let's say I have an electron at rest. Then what I need is a process where this electron at rest emits a photon and maybe it remains at rest, maybe it moves. But this is the question. Is such a process possible where an electron at rest emits a photon? Why not? Yeah, so it violates energy conservation. So an electron at rest, um, it, cannot emit a, uh, it cannot emit a photon, because it, where is that energy coming from? And, and, if you, especially, and if you want to conserve momentum, then the electron itself has to move too. Where is that energy coming from? At, at, at its rest state, it's at the lowest possible energy. So it's impossible. There's not enough energy to emit a photon and then move. So that's why this is an impossible process. Now, if you're looking at it in a reference frame where it was already moving, then it gets more complicated. That's why I'm telling you this principle where if this process is impossible in the rest frame of the initial electron, then it's impossible in any other reference frame, even in the reference frames where calculation is more, uh, more, um, calculation is more involved. Then um, one question that, you know, when you actually go through calculations and actually do the analysis, then one question that's eventually come up is this. When you look at a Feynman diagram that looks like this, Coulomb repulsion of two electrons. If you are trying to draw, all right, electron coming in, electron going out, electron coming in, an electron going out with a photon um, um, coupling this interaction together, then what you will find is that um, you are going to run into the same problem that we just discussed, that at this primitive vertex that um, you cannot conserve energy and momentum. And uh, I'll just give this to you as a fact that you just need to know. If mass of the photon is zero. If the mass of the photon is zero, it turns out there's no way to have this interaction work out. And so this is, um, 
this is what I was referring to when I um, said, I guess last week, there are kind of ways of doing calculation that seems to allow for violation of conservation of energy and momentum. And um, so, and it, that's something called the perturbation calculation and the kind of traditional perturbation calculation does that because these three conditions cannot all be simultaneously be satisfied. In the traditional perturbation calculation, what you do is you say, all right, we are going to violate conservation of energy and hold the rest. And, but what that leads to is it leads to a formulation that's not Lorentz invariant or formulation that's not compatible with the special relativity. So for people working in um, particle physics, the route they will take, or if you ever go into particle physics, the route you will take for the Feynman diagram for a calculation guided by Feynman diagram is you are going to hold on to conservation of energy and momentum by violating this instead. So you are going to say this is a virtual photon. You are going to say for virtual particles, they are so virtual particles are not, this is the phrase on their mass shell. As in, so you know the properties of the real particles. Real photon has mass of zero. And in order to, to make this work, we, uh, we, you know, if and when you do the calculation, you will say the, this virtual photon here, it doesn't have to have a mass of zero. It can have any other mass that it's required to have in order to hold conservation of energy and momentum. So I think that's all you guys need to know about Feynman diagram. So I'm going to use, be using the diagram as a way to illustrate the interactions that we are going to talk about as we cover particle physics today, Tuesday, and maybe a little bit on um, Thursday next week.